Hi there, Miss Barber here. The title of this lesson is Basic Trigonometric Equations. The objectives for this lesson are 1. Be able to solve basic trigonometric equations and 2. Be able to solve trigonometric equations by factoring. We define a trigonometric equation as an equation that contains trigonometric functions. Roman numeral 1 basic trigonometric equations. Solving any trigonometric equation always reduces to solving a basic trigonometric equation. That is an equation of the form t of theta equals c where t is a trigonometric function and c is a constant. To solve a basic trigonometric equation, first find the solution in one period and then find all solutions of the equation by adding integer multiples of the period to these solutions. Solve part a cosine of u equals the square root of 3 over 2. We begin trigonometric equations by solving for one period. The first thing I do is consider the quadrants in which each trig function is positive. I've got all students take calculus. This little mnemonic device lets me know that the cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So we need to do the inverse, that is u is equal to the cosine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2. Another way to ask this is at what value of u is the cosine square root of 3 over 2? Well it turns out that when we do the inverse the first time that you get a positive square root of 3 over 2 is at pi over 6 and its corresponding um, value when you go to the fourth quadrant would be, let's see, 11, yeah, 11 pi over 6. And now remember that the trig functions are periodic. That means these values repeat every one of their periods. The period of cosine is 2 pi, so we would write that u is 6 pi plus, and I write 2 pi k to let me know that it's all the integer multiples of pi, so 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi. Similarly, 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, and it's with the understanding that the k is an integer. Let's do this again. That was fun. Part B, sine of u equals oh, the negative square root of 2 over 2. So, first thing I'm going to do is determine in which quadrants the sine is negative. And the sine is negative is in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. Now we do the inverse. That is, u is equal to the sine inverse of the negative of square root of 2 over 2. And so we know that that's a pi over 4 starting value. And the first time it's negative is in quadrant 3. So that'll be u equals 5 pi over 4. And the next time that you're going to get a negative square root of 2 over 2 in the first period will be 7 pi over 4. Again, this is periodic, and we need to include every possible answer. So our answer is going to be, let me go ahead and write u equals for the previous one. And here u equals 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k and 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. Part C. 10x equals negative the square root of 3 over 3. So again, I'm going to do my mnemonic device and I'll do all students, all first quadrant, students second quadrant, uh, take third quadrant, calculus fourth quadrant. That tells me the quadrants in which each of the trig functions are positive. Now I need the quadrants in which the tangent is negative and the tangent will be negative in quadrant 2 
in quadrant four. Notice that that's an interval of pi. Now the next question is the tangent of what value would give me the negative square root of three over three, and that turns out to be when x equals five pi over six. So the tangent of five pi over six is negative square root of three over three, and it happens again in the fourth quadrant, which would be at the tangent of pi, 11 pi over six. Now, notice that from quadrant two to quadrant four is just pi. So we can actually write all of the answers as x equals five pi over six plus pi k provided that k is an integer. Just check, if you do five pi over six, so right down on the bottom, five pi over six, you add pi to that, that'll be six pi over six, and that will give you 11 pi over six, the other value in the same period. So we didn't have to write it as two separate equations. Now let's go to part D. This one doesn't quite look like the previous, but let's go ahead and solve for the cosine. So we'll have two cosine x adding one to both sides equals one. Now we have cosine of x dividing by two on both sides is one half. We need to get all the x values for which the cosine is one half. And I'll look at the first period. We notice that the cosine is positive in quadrant one and again in quadrant four. So the cosine of what in quadrant one gives us one half? Well, that tells us the cosine of pi over three. And it happens again in the fourth quadrant. And that value would be five pi over three. Now remember, the cosine is periodic, and we have to list all of the possible answers. So what we'll do is write pi over 3, and then add 2 pi k for every iteration. We'll also do that for x equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, and this is for k that is an integer. Roman numeral two, solve trigonometric equations by factoring. Factoring is one of the most useful techniques for solving all types of equations, including trigonometric equations. The idea is to move all terms to one side of the equation, factor, and then use the zero product property to solve. As a reminder, the zero product property states, if the product of a times b equals zero, then a equals zero, or b equals zero. Solve part a. The quantity tan t minus one times the quantity four sine squared minus three equals zero, for t between zero included and less than two pi. So we are looking for solutions in one period of um, the, the trig functions. Now this is already factored for us, so we'll begin right at the zero product property. That means we'll take tan t minus one and set it equal to zero, and four sine squared three a sine squared minus three and set that equal to zero. Let's solve each of these, well, each of these factors. So I'll now have tangent of t equals one. I added one to both sides. The question then is t equals tan inverse of one. So for what values of t does tangent equal one? Again, I like to set up my quadrants with a in the first quadrant, s in the second, t in the third, and c in the fourth. All students take calculus as a reminder for me the quadrants in which I am seeking the answers. 
I want tangent t equals 1. That's positive, and the tangent is positive in, let's see, quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. So what value in quadrant 1 does the tangent equal 1? Well, it turns out to be that if t is equal to pi over 4, tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Now, let's go to the third quadrant. What value of tangent in the third quadrant is equal to 1? And that turns out to be 5 pi over 4. So we've got those two values. Now let's move on over to the next factor. So we'll have 4 sine squared. Ooh, I forgot to write t in the problem. Write it in your notes, okay? So we'll have sine squared t, and we'll set that equal to 3. And then we will solve this, so divide by 4 on both sides. Sine squared t equals 3 fourths. Ugh, we don't have any special values of 3 fourths, but how about the square root of that? So how about sine t equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 4 is just 2. So we need to answer the question, the sine of what value results in plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 for t between 0 and 2 pi? That turns out to be for all four quadrants in the first quadrant of t is pi over 3. The sine of pi over 3 is positive the square root of 3 over 2. In the second quadrant, let t be 2 pi over 3. The sine of 2 pi over 3 is positive the square root of 3 over 2. In the third quadrant, let t be 4 pi over 3. The sine of 4 pi over 3 is negative the square root of 3 over 2. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, let t be 5 pi over 3. The sine of 5 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3 over 2. Part B, solve 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 equals 0. This is a quadratic type. We can factor this into two um, binomial terms. If it's helpful for you, you can choose to look at this as sine x quantity squared minus sine x minus 1 equals 0. If it doesn't do anything for you, ignore that I said it. Now let's factor. Then we'll have 2 sine x, close parentheses, and I'll open another one, sine x, close parentheses, equal to 0. The constant is a 1, so its only factors are 1. So I'll put that in for the second terms for each of the binomial. And then i got to decide where the plus and the minus go. I want a negative for the middle term, so let's make that sine x minus 1 and 2 sine x plus 1. Now we have two factors for which we can apply the zero product property. So we'll have 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0 and sine x minus 1 equals 0. Let's solve the left-hand one first. So we'll get 2 sine x equals negative 1. I subtracted 1 from both sides. Then, dividing by 2, I get sine x equals minus 1 half. Now, in what quadrants is the sine negative? It turns out that the sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. So what value in quadrant 3 can x be for the sine that gives us a negative one half? Well, that'll happen at x equals 7 pi over 6, and it happens again in the fourth quadrant. So that value will be 11 pi over 6. 
Remembering that trig functions are periodic, we want to make sure we get every single one of them. So let's add 2 pi k to the 7 pi over 6 and 2 pi k to the 11 pi over 6. And of course, this is with the understanding that um, k is an integer. Let's do the other term that's left. So I got sine x minus 1 equals 0. That tells me sine x equals 1. What value of x and sine will give us um, the 1? And we know that that is actually pi over 2. And so we want to make sure that we list all of the periodic multiples of pi over 2. So we'll do pi over 2 plus 2 pi over k.